Good evening and welcome to Crossroads. America is in a difficult position. Mass migration used to be a partisan issue. Now even New York City, the mayor here, is saying the problem could destroy the entire city. Crime has reached a point where it's borderline legal. Theft and drug use goes unpunished. Car theft is running rampant. Americans are being targeted by gangs in multi-billion dollar industries with little hope that law enforcement can do anything. So what's the solution? Well, it's to strip Americans of their ability to defend themselves, to take away their guns, at least to strip the right to bear arms from law-abiding citizens. Criminals will still have them. This was even admitted by the New Mexico governor who tried using an emergency order a couple weeks ago to temporarily ban guns. She said that America has a gun problem. You know, people can often legally carry loaded firearms on the streets. This makes it hard, though, for law enforcement to spot the criminals, since people carrying guns are not technically breaking the law by doing so. And so, in order to spot the criminals, we need to ban the guns. That way, if someone has a gun, we know they're a criminal. In other words, we need to ban guns so that only criminals have guns. That way, we know who the criminals are. Of course, I'd argue we can also spot criminals for doing things like stealing cars and robbing stores, but that's just me. But that brings us to where we are right now. Seeing the, car, the problems the country is facing, the Biden administration has launched a brand new office, and this office will push to ban guns for our safety. An official announcement on September 21st declared the launch of the first ever White House office of gun violence prevention. Here's President Joe Biden introducing the new office. We would push for Congress to do more. We're going to centralize, accelerate, and intensify our work to save more lives more quickly. That's why this new White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention is what it's designed to do. It will drive and coordinate a government and a nationwide effort to reduce gun violence in America. Now, Kamala Harris will be in charge of it, but like Biden says, hey, save lives more quickly, you say? Well, you might be asking how they're going to do that. If we look at the number of causes of death in America, the leading causes of death, most are actually health-related, things like heart issues, respiratory problems, you get into it further, it's accidents. A lot of it could be mitigated through better diet and maybe some exercise. Guns really come into the picture because of suicide. Suicide was the 11th leading cause of death in 2021. According to CDC statistics, around 48,100 Americans took their lives that year. And people used firearms in about 55%, roughly half of the suicide cases. So will the government try to prevent suicides? Actually, no, it's the opposite. The government has been trying to help people kill themselves through things like euthanasia. It's not just in the U.S. In Canada, they're pushing to allow kids to get euthanized, killed by their own government. They even have coloring books on government-assisted suicide for children. Some argue the parents should not even be told about it. Maybe the kid wants to get a gender change, maybe to kill themselves. They might not even tell you if they're doing it. A couple of weeks ago in Belgium, a woman was allegedly euthanized by nurses who smothered her with a pillow. Her family heard her scream as she was assisted. It's the brave new world, and the Biden administration seems to be mostly for it. And suicide in America, notably, has also been getting worse. So what about saving the lives of Americans? Are the proposed restrictions on firearms there to really save us from harming ourselves? Well, aside from suicide, you know, if self-harm is a problem, it may be better to focus on the drug problem first. After all, they kill more than double the number of Americans than even the total number of suicides each year. That's about four times as many Americans killed each year than of suicides even using guns. Illegal drugs have been killing Americans by the hundreds of thousands. Of the more than 106,000 Americans who died from drug overdoses in 2021 alone, about 70,600 were primarily caused by fentanyl. So maybe the government will crack down on drugs, save our kids from overdoses. After all, it does seem like they're taking our safety seriously. At least that's what they're saying. Or maybe they'll go after the drug cartels that supply the drugs or, you know, help secure the border to stop those drugs from flowing into the country. 
Well, it's actually the opposite. The government has been aiding these crimes. They've been pushing to decriminalize drugs. The Biden administration has actually been supplying drug addicts with things like safe smoking kits and other tools to help them use their illegal drugs. With the border, the Biden administration has tried forcing Arizona and Texas to even remove barriers meant to stop the illegal entry. And mass migration is actually making the cartels even more powerful. The cartels are literally making multi-billion dollar human trafficking operations thanks to those open border policies. But back to the deaths by firearms. Now, it does not appear that stopping suicide is the reason they want to restrict guns. They're not really doing much with it. They're actually massively strengthening the cartels as well. In a country around 300,000 people have been killed by the cartels since 2006. Now, personally, it seems counterintuitive to help them if the goal is to stop gun violence. But hey, that's another issue. The deaths by drugs do not seem to be an issue either. So what are they talking about with protecting us using gun restrictions? Well, news outlets tend to mix gun deaths with suicides to make the numbers higher. It seems the government doesn't really care about the suicides. So what about the rest? Well, most of the violence actually comes from gang violence, most gun violence in that regard. In fact, that's the majority of the so-called mass shootings. Data on this is sporadic, mostly because gang crime is not recorded the same as it used to be. It was actually an Obama administration policy where they changed the numbers around and they call them mass shootings instead. But if we go by the National Institute of Justice, it estimates that around 11,000 Americans are killed in homicides using guns each year. But it notes that guns were used in about 95% of gang homicides. And the number of gang-related homicides using guns last recorded at around 92% in 2008. So most of the gun crimes we hear that would fall under, you know, the things they're trying to protect us from, it's mostly gangs. Now that gang violence, meanwhile, is mostly consolidated in very Democrat cities with very tough laws on guns. Memphis, St. Louis, Oakland, New Orleans, Detroit. In fact, if America were to factor out the top 10 cities where gang violence is a problem, the rest of the country by population would have some of the lowest gun crime rates on the face of the earth. So is the solution to go after the gangs? Disarm the gangs? Well, no, actually. Many of the cities were actually pushing to defund the police that would actually go after them. Many cities, including Minneapolis, were having shortages of police in the wake of the BLM riots. Many have elected soft on crime or Soros DAs, and because of this, teenagers have been sent a message that murder is not even something of consequence. Now, when two teens were arrested in Las Vegas recently for filming themselves in the crime wave where they were running over bicyclists and stealing cars and killed a retired police chief, one of them allegedly said, I'll be out in 30 days, I'll bet you slap on the wrist. 